you me? Moment. Remember <laughs> that moment. Oh, man, listen. Uh, I, I truly am honored again to, to have this experience. Um, I, I empty my cup early. I never have a premeditated message. Uh, I always go into any situation and the first thing I do is ask God to just work and help me align with his work. Yeah. Whatever it is. Um, I want to say that I, I, I listen to a lot of people say they want to focus on like marketing and branding and that is important. That is truly important and, and I hear people saying I got to get into the room and, and that is important. But the most important part of that is truly knowing who you are and where you are on the journey. Yeah, yeah. That is important. And as I, as I stand here, I see so many people with so much potential. We talked about the potential with Acorn earlier. And your potential unlocks when you understand who you are. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the butterfly isn't the butterfly in the beginning, it's a caterpillar. And, and if the caterpillar wanted to, it could stay in that stage for the rest of his life. Mm -hmm. The caterpillar isn't forced to become a butterfly. There's no pressure on it to become a butterfly. But one day the caterpillar realizes, I've had enough. I've been eating off the ground for too long. I need to broaden my vision. I need to stop being intoxicated by my experience. A lot of times we can get intoxicated by the current experience that we in. And I'll use myself for example. You, you gain success. Sometimes God will give you what you want to show you that that ain't what you really need. Amen. Give us that. See all the noise. And so what happens is we'll get intoxicated by the success that we have and not realizing that there's another level. Yeah. But with that next level requires something different from you. Yeah. And so as the caterpillar decides to crawl up the tree, and then there's a metamorphosis that must take place. One of the most vulnerable things you can ever do in life is kill who you are to evolve into something better. Mm -hmm. The caterpillar says, I'm going to kill who I am. And so while the caterpillar is in that cocoon, it's the most vulnerable space it will ever be in. It cannot protect itself from humor. It cannot protect itself from prey. It just has a belief that when this is over, I'll be a brand new me. And once you become the brand new you, the thing about that metamorphosis is it can no longer go back to being a caterpillar. It has to commit to being a butterfly. It has to commit to seeing the world different. It has to commit to having new friends. It has to commit to having a new appetite. It has to commit. Even if it wanted to, it could not go back mm -hmm. to being a Say that. Stuck. <laughs> now it is evolved or died. Yep. So I say to you today, keep evolving. No matter the success, no matter the vision, no matter the opportunities that's presented to you, keep evolving. I like to say, be an apex entrepreneur. It's top of the line. That's you at your highest version. You transcend into something that you didn't even know you could be. I speak to myself because I started this journey as the Wall Street Trapper with a simple idea. I wanted to help my homies in the hood stop going to jail and stop dying. I wanted us to just get a little money. Small vision. Small. 
Like, say, bro, look, let's put your money in the stock market. And because if we go to prison, or if we get killed, we can at least leave our kids something. So what we did won't be in vain. Small vision. Small. But what happened was it evolved. It evolved through adversity. It evolved through trauma. It evolved through experience. And as I evolved, I realized personally that trap is not just for the hustler, bro. It's for everybody. And so now the vision is bigger than you. You gotta keep evolving. You gotta have an audacity to evolve. Mm -hmm. And so just recently, I personally spent $40,000 for a two-day class on business. $40,000. The crazy part about it was this was my second time I spent $40,000. The first time I spent the $40,000, I, I listened to everybody that said, yo, you got to get the room. Right? So it wasn't nobody that told me go to the room, but I saw the room, and I knew I needed to be in the room, but I wasn't ready for the room the first time. Mm -hmm. So when I went to the room, I had me all in there. I had to skip middle school and went straight to college. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then into the process, but I won't skip grades. And so when I went back this time, I was even more empowered. Now, the worst thing that can happen to you on a journey is you get, you acquire a lot more success only to realize, yo, you still got a long way to go. Because I had to tell myself, trap, you still was hustling. Until you realize it's a mindset. There's a difference between hustling and running a business. Hustling ain't sustainable. So when I hear people saying, Queen actually damn, running through the ring, I'm like, yeah, that's what they need. Because mm -hmm. they don't know if they still hustling. Mm -hmm. If she put you through the ringer, it's because I already, I've, yo, I've seen what she's done. I've seen her work. I've seen her put the systems in place. So if you're saying she run you through the ringer, I'm saying welcome to the big league. Yep. Mm -hmm. Because if you can't have that pressure, mm -hmm. it get excruciating past that. I know successful people, eight, nine-figure people that's just like, yo, I, I, I'd rather just go back to because money don't solve the problem. Right. Once you grow the business now, you're not having a product situation. You start having to be a people person. People becomes the product that you got to help and evolve. And I ain't talking about the consumers. I'm talking about the people you hire to help you build your team. Yeah. Talking people. Right. So just know that when you evolve into being a butterfly, So we cannot, we cannot have the audacity to want results and be afraid to put in work. We cannot have the audacity to believe and then not be willing to do what's required. We cannot have restoration without having demolition. So that today be the day that we unanger ourselves. We unanger ourselves from anything and anybody that doesn't activate our greatness. Anything and anybody that doesn't activate our greatness. I'm gonna take it back out of this little. Like that the king said, trap you, you told, like, you made me know that you gave me permission to talk about God. Mm -hmm. Listen, I'm gonna talk about love all the time. Okay. I love love building. I love helping people evolve, but I also understand that there is no evolution of trap without the evolution of adding God in my life. Amen. 
I don't even know why I have God in my life. I add him in my message. Jose goes probably 80% of the places where we really travel. And I remember one day I told Jose, I was mad because I said, Jose, I realized why I was kind of angry at my last message. And the people got it, but I wasn't satisfied. And he was like, Jose is one of those people, and you need a, you need a person on your team that's going to always challenge why your team do anything. If you're the only person on your team that the process starts and ends with you, you are destined for failure. If the process and everything you say is right and nobody challenges you and you can't take that, you are destined for failure. If your only rebuttal to challenge is, this is my business, you are destined for failure. Mm -hmm. So I tell say so. Say so. This is thing. He talked to me. Tell me more. <laughs> you want to know? Tell me more. Amongst us, I can always tell us how God is working in my life. I get disappointed sometimes when I feel like I haven't did what I think God has a line for me to do. That that weighs on me hard. Weighs on me hard. And I'm about to say something. So I remember, and I'm going to get back to this, because it's on my heart, and I've never said this publicly. Not too long ago, my trauma was because I come from the streets, I always feel like I always had to protect myself. No matter who I was with, no matter who I was around, I always carried my gun. So one day, I had two speaking engagements back to back, and then I had to go to New Orleans to do something. And it was probably just right after I had to do Traffic Tuesday, which is my show at 7 o'clock. And because traveling tools is at nighttime, I always bring my belly, and I always have a comfortable set, I always put it on the side. And I'll be all right. I'll be like, you know, I just won't have it in case. So I get up the next day, I rush to get on the airplane, I dump everything out of the book site, I pack my bags, I get on the airplane, I get to that airport, and when I get to that airport, the man stops me and says, hey, I need to check you. You have been randomly selected for a search. I said, shit, why not? Go ahead on, bro. I'm good. He goes in my bag, searches the bag, shakes me down. He said, you good. I said, all right, cool. Take the bag, I put it on the metal. Metal detective thing goes through. The guy says, what's up, Trap? I just watched Trap two yesterday. I say, salute, King, thank you. I get on the airplane, I get in my bag. I'm like, dang, man, let me get my charger because I'm on the phone because I like to read and listen to my audible books on the airplane. And I don't want the, I don't want the, my phone and die. I go in the bag, I reach for my charger. But I don't get the charger, I said, I'm tired, I'm about to go see. Plane off in the first class, get off the plane, get my bag. Man stops me again, hey, it's a different airport. I'm in New Orleans. I'm thinking I'm home, everybody go trap. Hey, listen, we gotta shake it down right quick. You've been randomly selected for a search. I said, I ain't never heard of no search. When I get to another airport, this all you get them when you go in the airport. Search me, get it. I'm like, all right, cool. We go about my business. I go get the rental car. I get up and get the rental car. Let me go to the hotel. I'm good. I get in the rental car, I see my phone by the dock. I say, man, let me get charged right quick. I'm tripping. I go in that bag and I feel my gun. And I say, I know you lying. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all ain't get what I just said. I went to the airport. I went to first class. I got checked three times. The man gave me my book sack. He said, I gave him the bag to get the charger. The gun is in the charger. I say, I know you lying. I start crying in the car right there. I called Jose. I called my cousin Joe. I said, hey, I, I said, hey, I ain't never seen a miracle in my life. I said, this ain't just a miracle. I'm, 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 I'm that person. I said, this is a Moses fit the Red Sea kind of miracle. 
They was like, what happened? Why tell them a story? They hang up the phone. This ain't happening. This ain't the position shaking his head. We on the phone. I sat and coughed for a minute. I cried. I said, God, I know you with me now. I don't care if I ever doubt it in my life. I know you with me. What you gonna do with them? I said, I don't need it. Because <laughs> <laughs> I just realized how protected I am. Oh, yeah. 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 I just realized how protected I am. Mm -hmm. So I'm telling you, Deuteronomy 8 and 18 says that, that God has given you the ability to produce wealth. Mm -hmm. Giving you that ability. But one of our problems is we don't walk into that ability because we won't walk into our own ability. And I always say this, your best play ain't in God's playbook. I don't think they need to give us the ability, but it says that he swore, swore, to his covenant that he gave your ancestors as if it was today. In case you don't know what that means, ain't nobody swore in confirmation like God. You know, like you be having your truth, and then there's like a God truth. That truth is different. That is an absolute. That is a confirming what's true. So we need to understand ability to produce the wealth that we vision. And it is a sworn covenant. That means we just got to get an alignment what's for us and we got to get out of our own way. That's right. Mm -hmm. After this meeting, I just want you to understand that you have the ability, you have the power, you've been Told to possess the land. Come on, yeah. You have to prepare the visuals like he told Joshua. Mm -hmm. And it's on you. Nobody else. Mm -hmm. It's on you to go attain what's yours. Now, I love y'all. That's how I love you.